All right, guys. Happy New Year to uh, everybody out there. Uh, speaking of Happy New Year, just I'm in the process of uh, buying a house. Okay, so I'm a pretty, pretty busy guy. I got to sell this one. Got to work through the contract, the new house, and all that other stuff. But one thing I'm really looking forward to: the new house has an excellent bench already in the basement, ready to go. Uh, so I can get kind of out of this shop a little bit and get a little bit more room, uh, and hopefully. Uh, have better bench side, uh, better quality videos. Anyways, that's that. Uh, but I want to focus on the Six Creed. All right. Uh, and what I want to do is just have a troubleshooting series uh, kind of on this gun because it is, uh, it's not really performing. Um, it's a rebarrel. It's a new, new barrel on this guy. Got a lot of great, great things going for this gun. It just will not put them on paper. Uh, so... Want to kind of walk through that. So where we're at today, let's just review what the rifle is, right? Uh, this is a Remington 700 action. It's been blueprinted, you know, trued up. Everything's been squared off, squared off lugs, uh, bolt face, everything. Okay. Trued up Remington 700 short action. And uh, we've got a Criterion uh, 6 Creedmoor 1 and 8 twist. It's 26 inches long. And again, this is a pre-fit, so it's got a jam nut. <clears throat> it does have the precision ground, um, heavy uh, recoil lug on it. I really like that. The 204 uh, has this as well. And I just really like, uh, you know, the surface ground uh, flat uh, recoil lug. It's a little bit heavier. It's nice. Um, this thing has been scrubbed, right? This is basically brand new okay as clean as i can get it there is not a trace of copper a trace of carbon i scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed got this thing pristine okay so we're starting from scratch uh, with this barrel um and just kind of moving up there we've got a 20 moa uh, weaver uh, picatinny rail i'm running six bolt tactical weaver uh, scope mounts and this is my vortex diamondback target uh, scope here this all sits on a Magpul Hunter um, uh, chassis, so no bedding, no just a bed block on this thing. No, no bedding, no no glass, no pillars, no nothing. Aluminum bed block, uh, and just have bolts. Uh, the bolts are, are are torqued down uh, to spec here on this. Same setup I ran um, with my factory Remington 243 that this used to be right, and that thing shot lights out. So that's. The firearm here that's the rifle what have i done so far so i broke this thing in on 75 grain v maxes okay shot right around an inch group or last three quarters of an inch group with those two uh which was great did a couple little hunting videos had some fun with it put a couple you know maybe 100 rounds through it sort of thing cleaning and all that shot well then i started right into development on bullets i, I actually want to use uh going forward so, uh, so far, 87 grain V-Maxes, 87 grain boat tail hollow points, uh, 90 grain uh, game changers, Sierras, 95 grain burger uh, boat tail hollow points, and the 105 Hornady uh, boat tail hollow points have all been run through this gun. Uh, using H4350, I uh, have a lot of that. Uh, and honestly, I've had one set of the 105 Hornadies that actually grouped well where everything was touching. Okay. This, I think that's the last video I did on this. Unfortunately, when I went back out and repeated that and, and did a little playing around with seating depth, it didn't repeat. Okay. So this thing is still shooting around three quarter inch groups, uh, kind of randomly, uh, which is very odd. Uh, so in this video, we'll kind of go through in this series, right? I want to go through, um, you know, everything I'm doing in terms of on the reloading bench, at the shooting bench, how I'm cleaning this thing, if, if I'm cleaning it before or between, um, you know, trips to the range or not, uh, sort of thing. So that's what's been done uh, with the rifle. As far as ammo, as far as ammo and uh, reloading, 
Uh, let's talk about the dies here. So I'm going to start with these 105 boat tail hollow points because this is where I saw signs of life. Okay. We want to try to get that to repeat and then become consistent. So for, for dies, I always, I run a, uh, Lee, uh, call it die for setting neck tension. I run a Redding body die and put a two thou bump, uh, on the shoulders. Okay. I run, uh, just the Lee, uh, seating die, seating stem on that guy. And then the Lee quick trim. I do that for all my rifles. This is not something new for this rifle. I mean, I do that with, with the 204, my other 243s, uh, 223, things like that. So uh, nothing new with the dies, but that's what I'm that's what I'm using at least for starters. Um, the 105s. So I've got some loaded up here. We're gonna take these to the range in a minute, and I wanted to basically start off with the reason why I kind of paused on this gun is because it became a bit of a waste uh, of primers. Okay, uh, large rifle primers are really hard to find in my area, uh, so. I'm hesitant to just go out and burn them down uh, in this rifle that won't perform. So I've, I've kind of paused on that. But I've come across some large rifle magnums. Okay. So that's what we're going to be using for this little series. And I don't think that's going to hurt anything. Um, actually going to a magnum primer might kind of... That extra pressure might, might settle this thing down. Uh, who knows? We'll find out through the course of this. But um, because these are mag primers, I'll be paying attention to um you know signs of pressure um i'm using peterson brass uh, for all of this and i wash it i, I basically pin uh, tumble the brass and anneal uh, after every uh, use okay because again um, same thing with the clean rifle i can't control how dirty the rifle is i can only control how clean it is same thing with the brass I can't control how dirty or carboned up it gets, but I can control how clean it is, right? If that's the same every time, if I develop on brass that's clean every time, then that's more consistent than, than dirty, right? At least that's, that's how I'm looking at it. Um, but that's what we've got going on today. I want to get to the range today and shoot these four sets and let's, uh, with the chronograph and we'll see what we get. Okay. All right. Stay tuned. All right, guys, finally made it to the bench. Uh, again, running uh, 105 uh, Hornady boat tail uh, hollow points. Um, mag primers. Okay, so that's why I want to do this little intro on the range here. I'm using mag primers. <clears throat> There's no published data uh, for the six Creedmoor using a magnum primer. Uh, so I'm going to keep these loads uh, to myself. Uh, but if you were to use magnum primers uh, you want to start way low you want to start way low uh quite a bit more pressure spike uh, in a mag so just be careful with that see how this thing does All right, guys, well, we're back from the bench uh, with the six Creed here, <clears throat> and uh, really not too bad, not a bad outing at all. It's almost like you see the, the groups, you know, let's just go through the groups real, real quick. Now, again, uh, I don't really care about the groups at this point. I'm just kind of interested in extreme spread numbers and my average velocities, right? See if there's a, a node hanging around with four groups. I don't know if you can really shake that out all the way, but doesn't look that bad, right? So we got a 0 0.980, a 0 0.865, a 0 0.515, and a 
8.1. Okay. And we started out kind of big and then this guy kind of necked down. It's almost like, you know, this is a totally clean bore scrubbed out barrel. So it's like we had a couple foulers here, right? And then, you know, we had these basically first four shots, two in the same hole. And then we started seeing some pretty decent groups here. So I think that's, I'm going to take that as a, uh, you know, a good thing. Okay. As far as, uh, ignore, the other thing is to ignore this. This is a 20, this is a 204, uh, shot here, checking a new scope on that thing. Anyways, <laughs> um, my averages, right? Average was 3,018. So 3018, 3029, 3026, and then a 3062. So it's like we were on a nice little node through these three, right? Uh, and then we jumped up to a 3062. Um, as far as my extreme spread numbers or my ranges on these guys, I got a 32, a 25, an 11, and a 14. So that also seemed to kind of uh, settle down, right, as, as we fired the gun. So I think what I'm going to do next here is I'm going to not clean the gun, right, because I kind of like the way it seems to be hitting here. Uh, and I'm going to retest these two groups. I'm going to retest this one and then the next one. Okay. Uh, again, this will be mag primers, H4350. And, uh, let's see if we can see if we can find, um, a repeatable load, right? So uh, the reason why I'm going to repeat these is because, uh, you know, the last time this thing showed signs of life, when I went back out, it did not repeat. So I'm going to uh, repeat these guys and see what we get. Um, and we'll just, we'll take it from there. So stay tuned for more on this guy. Thanks.